Welcome to Research Perch from the Massage Therapy Foundation. Short, practical insights into massage therapy research and how it can benefit your practice. Hey everyone, welcome back to Research Perch. Uh, this is Michael Reynolds, the co-chair of the Marketing Committee for the Massage Therapy Foundation, and we're glad you've joined us. Uh, here is all always today, Nikki Monk. Nikki, how are you? Hey, doing great. Thanks, Michael. Good. Joining us from our office in Indianapolis, it looks like. And Ruth, uh, how are you today? I'm great. It's a beautiful sunny day here on the Oregon coast. Fantastic. I always love seeing the background when we're uh, uh, doing the video here because it's such a beautiful uh, landscape you, you have as your backdrop there. So uh, good to talk to you both. As our uh, listeners know, hopefully by now, if you're just joining us, a little bit of background on the uh, Research Perch podcast. Um, the Research Purge podcast is designed to unpack articles from the International Journal of Therapeutic Massage and Body Work, or IJTMB.org, and uh, we take these articles and, like I said, we unpack them, we kind of dig into what they mean and how they relate to you and the world of massage therapy research. So, again, so glad you've joined us. Um, so today, we are talking about, uh, I think, a pretty... Uh, I'm really excited about this article because um, it's based on... It actually addresses something that um, I think is becoming huge and will become even bigger and bigger, and this is the development of a hospital-based massage therapy course at an academic medical center. So um, kind of the background here is massage therapy is being offered more and more in medical facilities, and uh, as we were talking before we started the podcast here, you know, Ruth and Nikki, we were talking about how, how incredibly significant and important this work is going to be. So I know you're both very excited to jump into this, so uh, who'd like to start us off? Well, from a journal perspective, let me just um, do a quick little point out that this is an article that was just recently published in the education section of the IJTMB journal. And so mm -hmm. this, is, this is an aspect of the journal that isn't quite as robust as um, the research section or even the practice section. And I just want to give a big shout out to these authors and an appreciative shout out to these folks for actually doing a very um, systematic and a uh, detailed overview of implementing a program, an education program, and then talking about how they measured its success uh, as far as student feedback and some of the implementation pieces around it. This is the kind, this is the kind of article that the IJTMB is, is very interested in publishing, particularly because it's elevating the um, the dialogue between education in our field, which as we know is not very consistent. So uh, I just wanted to put that piece out from the journal editor perspective and uh, before we started digging into it. So there's my piece and Ruth, I'll let you start the next piece. <laughs> That's great. That really works for me, Nikki. Um, so when people read this and I have to apologize. I have a dog that's growling in the background, so um, the charm. my stomach. That's what we, we we like the podcast to be real, so we appreciate right, that. Yeah. <laughs> Animals are welcome. <laughs> um, so re, pe when people um, open this article to read it, they you won't find um, a, a a typical research article because this is simply a description of what it took to. <clears throat> to create and implement a particular educational program. So we're not doing an experiment, we're not comparing before and after, it really is just a report on what people felt was a really um, uh, significant um, thing to offer the profession. Um, and uh, readers of this article might be familiar with one of the names in the author list, in fact he's listed as the contact person but not as the primary author, um, and that's Dr. Brent Bauer. And uh, Dr. Bauer has spoken on behalf of massage therapy in a really public way. He's presented at AMTA meetings. Um, he's been a, a really good advocate for our field, um, and he's a good spokesperson for complementary and integrative healthcare. Um, and and I'm sure that's you know why he was recruited to be part of this to be part of this report. Well, one of the things I'll point out is actually the position that he's in in the authorship shows him as the senior author. So oh, all right. Yeah, so he's the senior author, the sort of the senior person involved in this project. Um, but, you know, it's interesting that you do point out the authorship pieces, and I'm looking here at uh, Ms. Dion and Cutshaw and Rogers and um, her, uh, Hosea. Hoshultz. Hoshultz and Dreyer. 
Sure. And yes, and, and dryer. And these are all massage therapists. Right. So these are the actual practitioners who are involved in, in forming this piece and, and, and writing it. And so they're they're getting some of the, um, especially Miss Dion is getting the first authorship credit for this piece. And she probably did a lot in putting all of the actual writing and things together. So um, his while he's not the first author, he is the senior author. He's the senior author. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. I, I was pleased that he wasn't listed as first author because that's a big, uh, that's a big credential for someone who goes through this kind of process. So, um, so kudos to the, all the massage therapists who participated in 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 putting this important piece together. Um, what what these folks did was. Um, and, and they describe the, the sort of varied way by which they came to this, but they decided that it was going to be important to codify um, a training program to have massage therapists with, you know, whatever kind of different levels of, of entry level of edu education that we find in our field, um, come to a baseline of what they felt it was going to be important and useful um, and safe and effective to be able to work with complex health situations in a complex setting. So the training, the way they describe it, I was pleased to see is not just about working with complex conditions, you know, osteoporosis on top of diabetes on top of a hip replacement, um, but it's also about navigating the complexities of working in a hospital setting understanding who reports to whom and what kinds of things you're going to see when you're working in a hospital room and what kinds of special um, uh, mental and emotional challenges that comes with you know come along with working with people who are very very ill. Well that's interesting so it's not just about um, the clinical but also kind of the the business and the logistical aspect of working in a hospital as well. Absolutely and and you know one of the one of the Things that we see in research are are things that we call um, oh shoot the word just flew right out of my oh plaus, uh, feasibility studies right where where we might be interested say to see if if massage therapy for someone recovering from heart surgery is useful but the first thing we have to see is does it even fit is it even practical to bring it into this setting where there are machines and things noisemakers and people running in and out and you know, you can't stand on the oxygen tubes and, um, you, know, you know, the very, very complex settings that come in. And so before we can really even ask the question, can massage be helpful here, we have to ask the question, can massage even work at all? Be integrated into that setting. Could we even apply massage therapy in the setting? And, and this group actually has, has you know, the need for this was based on the fact that they've done several research studies where they've done some of these feasibility pieces and they've, they've gathered some of this preliminary data and they're realizing that you know there is some efficacy that's being shown here and the people that they've been using I, I would suspect in these studies have been doing a lot of on-the-job training or they've come from other backgrounds that um, exposed them to these sorts of situations and made them made them a good candidate to come in and, and work in these environments. And then as they start looking around and realizing that this program is expanding, they want to expand it, the people that they have available to hire have a deficiency in their knowledge base to be able to work effectively in these situations. And so what they did was, and, and as Ruth described, they started looking around and they identified who the stakeholders were in this. Right. And they got them together to talk about what do we need? What are the deficiencies? What are the things that the higher-ups and those who are in the hospital administration look down and see this is what somebody who is going to function well needs to know? And the massage therapists are being uh, integrated into this process of what is it that you guys feel like you need to know? What was missing? What, what, what would be beneficial? And so that was sort of the, the basis of it. Right. Well, and what I what I loved about <laughs> their description in the method section under initial steps mm -hmm. was about going identifying who the key stakeholders were and and going to them to get the most important pieces of information. And in a sense, this isn't you know this isn't just the outline of how we created our hospital based massage therapy course. It can also be an outline for how to create a hospital based massage therapy practice or massage therapy relationship. Um, so, you know, they identified their key stakeholders and shall I just run through this list because I happen to have it up 
and easy? Please. So, sure. So they were uh, the Complementary Integrative Medicine Program Leadership, including the Operations Administration. Um, this was at an, uh, a health science school, so they worked with the Academic and Faculty Affairs Subcommittee. They worked with the Health Science Schools Education Committee, and they worked with NCBTMB so that this training program would be qualified for continuing education. Um, and then when they had finished an initial course, then they also went back to their students, you know, their, their, their participants to gather feedback on what they felt was functional and what they felt was missing so that they could continue to hone and, and improve the course. And I just, I, I, I felt that their description of the process was so smart and, and how often, you know, I hear very often from people who are thinking, oh, I'd love to get to start doing massage in the hospital in my town, but I have no clue how to get that started. Well, this paper provides, you know, not just about a training program, but about creating the relationships and, and um, doing a reality check on what it takes to work in this setting. Um, I was actually going to ask you about that, Ruth. Um, my head initially goes to, okay, let's say you're a massage therapist and you would like to get more involved in working in a hospital setting. Um, is there anything that you would suggest that, that to, uh, to help with this effort, to help get a program started perhaps or get involved? Yeah. Well, I think going to this paper to look at the baseline things that this group did is a great place to start. Um, I, I am chair of the education committee at the foundation and, and one of the things we're probably going to be taking on fairly soon is, is the topic of educational research and how can you, and, and within that, how can you demonstrate that special training actually leads to better outcomes, right? And so I uh, have had that sort of filter on my brain when I, when I was reading this paper and so I entered it with sort of a skeptical point of view, saying, all right, go ahead, show me why it's necessary to have special training. And by golly, I am a believer. They made a really nice, comprehensive list of, of things you need to know to work safely in a hospital setting that you don't get in entry-level massage therapy education. Um, and so, for instance, uh, this is feedback from the participants about what was lacking in their own training. And that was the ability to work safely in an acute care medical environment, specialized patient documenting, documentation and charting, medical terminology, navigation of the hospital environment, and that will vary for every facility, effective communication with other healthcare workers, which is something that we haven't really addressed as a profession, management of infection control, and adaptation of techniques and pressure for medically frail patients. So a lot of us have some background in some of these things, but most of us don't have adequate background in all of these things to be able to walk into an acute care setting and say, here I am, lead me to your recovery room and I can be helpful. Right? So <laughs> I think one of the other things too that they point out is that there wasn't a whole, there's not a whole lot of education opportunities out there. Mm -hmm. And they and they were able to cite really two two um uh, text resources, one that was an online resource and one that was the uh, uh, Gail McDonald, I believe, the medically frail patient. Uh, Wonderful, beautiful book. A really great book. And at the same time, it still it still takes out the experiential piece of it. Truly, you know, there's 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 so much that we can get and, and, and a lot of things tend to focus on what can't be done. Okay, well you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. <laughs> and rather than here is how you do it. Here is how you navigate this. Here are the things that you do do and you can't and you can do. Here are the skills because really and claim, yeah, and, and that you can claim, you right. know, that you can predict, right. and yeah. it's, and 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 how your critical thinking has to sort of adjust in these and be adaptable in these very face fast paced environments. And one of the other things that the that the authors point out that they found a need for was that as medical stays are getting shorter, it becomes an even more intensified place for the massage therapist to come and work in an even more fast pace than it was before. And so this is something that's, that's changing really fast and the way that care is being handled and care is changing, this is going to continue to happen. And so moving away from this um, laundry list that tends to happen when we're trying to get so much information 
and, and absorb it really fast and you know maybe a three hour continuing education meeting here or there on a very a very narrow area to a more comprehensive piece and so they and they actually break it down into in, into learning objectives that as, as educators we know have theoretical basis right you mm -hmm. need to have that piece of content delivery that can be very effectively done in an online setting if need be or in a reading type classroom but then there's also these pieces that is experiential that has to happen for our field and so they and they set that up right um, so should we talk about the structure yeah, of how this course yeah. is created Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I just love this. If I were still in practice, I, I would, I would probably sign up for this. Me too. Um, I know. Doesn't it sound fabulous? So it begins with some online learning. Um, they use Blackboard as their interface, and a lot of people are familiar with that. And they've tried to to put as much of the theoretical material in that format as possible, so that they can clear out. They they plan on one week of classroom time, 40 hours of intensive classroom time, um, in which they they have conversations and interactions that cannot happen remotely. So a lot of this classroom time is de is dedicated to simulation situations where they have a hospital. Um, space that's created for them to work with. They have actors or they have, I know that it's also sometimes done with specialized dummies um, where they can uh, get used to moving around with the equipment and all the other things that are in the room. Um, and then the one week uh, classroom time is then followed by 25 hours of one to one st uh, uh, internship with an instructor in that hospital setting. So a, a shadowing situation. What so, I'd like I'd like to point out that that was the final outcome, right? So initially, when they right. did the first dry run of this, the two, right? Yeah, right. It was just it was just the online portion followed by the the week long intensive forty hour training, and then they got feedback from the students that were able to go through this dry run free of charge. They wanted to they wanted right. to sort of feel it out and get feedback from them, and the feedback that they provided was, you know, this is really fantastic. We got to do these pieces, these pretend scenarios. But there's still the piece that's missing, and that's the actual feet on the ground in the environment, just to see what it is. And that's where that that next piece came in. And I think that this really speaks to, and, and you know, maybe this is just me and my 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 unknowingness, but this creation of continuing education that might be happening a, a bit in a silo, and not really getting the, the the testing it out there and seeing what those feedback pieces are and really making a very meaningful continuing education experience not just for practitioners and and, and clients but for the field right. and and this is something that feels to me to be very um, um, solid in doing all of those things that it's not just about um, what program can I create to, to, to make a lot of money perhaps and, and to meet continuing education needs that massage therapists have to have but that really is something meaningful for the field and that's going to elevate it overall. So I, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you're right, it does, um, I mean this sounds very exciting so I guess um, my next question is what, how do you take it? How do you take the course? Where is it? And is it, I mean is it publicly offered? Is it about to be offered? Is it going to be offered at other places? How, how does a massage therapist get a hold of this course? Um, what I know about it, which is limited, is that this is offered in Minneapolis and it's through the Mayo Clinic. Um, okay. the, the thing to do probably would be to get in touch with um, the, I believe it's Dr. Bauer, who's listed as the contact person. Um, you know, this article is meant to describe the process, not to be an ad for the course. And so it's hard for me and for Nikki, too, to sort of avoid being rah rah, this sounds like such a great course. Well, sure, but it's a great ad for the course. Uh, <laughs> Don't <right>? you think? <laughs> but it, uh, you know, so that's sort of the best kind of advertising, isn't it? Right. Um, but, I, you know, what I'd like to see is for other people to create, uh, you know, to use this as a model to create hospital trainings in other places with that great emphasis on hands on in the, you know, feet on the ground, not theoretical decision making, but um, in the moment decision making that, uh, uh, you know, that we sometimes have to make if we're working in a complicated situation. Uh, well, so, so here's a little thing that just sort of came to my mind too about this, you know, we're not, we're certainly not intending to say this is the best course ever, everyone should go take it as, as an advertisement, but I think it does <laughs> speak to the thing of it does get people talking, the fact that they have published this education um, description and how they've developed it 
this is not the only program right. training massage therapists to work in hospital settings. I, I mean, I happen to know of, I mean, I'm really outside of the loop now, but I happen to know of two that I've not seen any involvement in the literature. And I know that they worked really hard to put these programs together. And here's an online journal that is open access that can, and, and, and that not to use this as a, as, a, as a commercial vehicle by any means, but to be able to talk about the process. It's about how it was involved and how they were doing this in a rigorous way. And it's, I think well, that... It might be nice to see the other two programs submit their report as well. Oh, um, yeah. what do you think? I'd love to see that. In fact, well, I'm so now I'm thinking about writing a paper on teaching pathology. Oh my God! Yeah. Oh, I hope, I hope to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the all the little uh, pathways oh, we've opened yeah, up here. Yeah, we've got one else, episode. Yeah, going on. So many um, pathways. <laughs> I, you know, I want to reiterate what Nikki said. This is certainly not the only course that's available. And in fact, I know of at least one school which is making a specialty in in teaching hospital-based massage therapy as a specialty for their even for their new graduates. Um, we also had a poster at National last year or the year before about using um, specialized uh, um, 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 uh, mannequins or dummies. Uh, on which to practice skills for working in, in, in these complex settings. And, and people read that poster and they're kind of, what? This has nothing to do with reality. And, you know, there was a spirited defense of, of why it was useful and practical. And um, uh, I, I, it was a very, very interesting conversation to watch. Um, before, we, before we leave this conversation, and, and Nikki, you may have other things you want to talk about, I just want to leave us with a couple of a couple of ideas. One is that my sense is that the need for hospital literate massage therapists is only going to rise. I concur. Yeah, I, you know, the research is really trending in that in that in the direction that we have good things to offer that's cost effective and safe um, and may, you know, reduce complications and med medicine use and and Whatever. So you know, they, there are some good things I think that are that are in the air for us in terms of massage for hospital settings, but that has to be tempered with the with the caveat that um, there is at this point no uniformly applied way for massage therapists to get paid in this kind of thing. <laughs> That's an interesting gesture with your head. So. <laughs> Um, and that becomes much more complex, and, uh, and and there have been some really interesting and fun suggestions for solutions to this problem. But really, what we need is evidence that says this works, this is effective, this is safe, and and then the next step is um, building in how we can get budgeted as part of the treatment process. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is we were. Uh, so, so sorry, my, go ahead, Nikki. My interesting head head movements was I thought you were going into a different direction, Ruth, and then you went to that direction, which is a very valid direction. And so that was where that was where the sort of curly cue happened in that. <laughs> yes, and Nikki. While we're on tangents, wow. I love the red lizard attached to your um, cabinet like, yeah, behind you. Yeah, I feel like you that. <laughs> yeah. So um, as we were talking, I know we're kind of wrapping up, but I was uh, I pulled out my tablet and just did a Google search, and I I found the program here on the Mayo Clinic website. I know we don't want to make a commercial out of it, but uh, I think it's worth sharing just some facts about the program. It's a it's a six week program. Uh, the prerequisite is completion of a 500 hour minimum massage therapy program, and they grant a certificate of completion. And it looks like um, it's offered twice a year uh, according to their website. And it uh, looks like about 65 hours total, the 40 hours of um, the program work and then 25-hour internship looks like what they, they list here. So, uh, yeah, it's worth worth reading about, I think. It's very interesting. Um, so, yeah, I encourage people to, to check it out, and I'd love to hear more about the other programs out there as well. So, yeah. so add um, comments. Brent Jackson, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Add comments about hospital training um, uh, um, that that you see or that you think is important or useful, uh, and um, I, I'm really eager to see where this goes for the profession because yeah, the research. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll have I'll have my little my my last little piece too, and that is sort of tack on at the end of what you were talking about, Ruth. 
is that we're in the middle of a paradigm shift, not only in healthcare and the way that healthcare is delivered, but also in our field and how integrative medicine and massage therapy is a part of integrative medicine and how it and how it all blends together and, and, and all of this and this is the place where I thought you were going Ruth <laughs> going to be it has to coincide with an elevation of our field yes it absolutely yep. has to happen and as part of that elevation of our field absolutely is figuring out how we work within the compensation structure of all of this because if this is going to be something that is offered and utilized and is effective we do have to have this be a viable career path right and how things are going to be a viable career path is that there is a standardization of education and that when people know this is the profession this is what this person does that we don't have to wonder oh wait a minute okay well what what are their credentials where were they trained oh they were trained in, in, in this state okay well that means something different and you have to have all of these knowledge pieces when I go and talk to doctors in the research setting, and I'm talking about massage therapy and how can we do research about that, the first thing that, get, that they go is, well, well who, who are the massage therapists around there and here, what is their training <laughs> able to go into a medical setting, which is There's where we're going, whether it be dog. the, hi, doggy, the, you know, the, VA, the VA hospital <laughs> or the acute care settings or, or whatever. And so that elevation of the field, I think, is, is along with the evolution of our field and where we're practicing. <laughs> Elevation piece is going to be really big in the next 10, 15, 20 years. It's going to be a whole other ball game. Oh, I from your mouth to God's ear. I, you know, I believe that you're absolutely <laughs> right. I also I believe that this is a, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I also believe that this is a, a, a an important role for us to look to the National Certifying Board for. You know, think about being board certified in hospital-based massage therapy. <laughs> So I think that these are all possible next steps. Dog agrees. We'll probably wrap this up so I can go in quiet. Time <laughs> to feed the dog. Okay, well, we'll go wrap up on that note. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've been looking through the curriculum here on the side as well, talking, and it's, it's pretty um, pretty impressive. So um, glad we talked with us today. This is really exciting stuff. So thank you both today so much uh, for joining us. And uh, thanks for everyone listening, if you're listening. Um, if you go to IJTMB.org and search for uh, Bauer, B-A-U-E-R, that's one of the authors, um, or just you know search for uh, Academic Medical Center as a keyword you can search on as well. You'll find the article pretty easily. Uh, download it, take a look, um, you know, explore it, and uh, I think it'll be great reading for our listeners. So uh, if you're watching, uh, we'll put a link to the show notes below with a link to the article as well. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today, uh, Nikki and Ruth. You bet. Uh, as always, pleasure speaking with you both. And to all our listeners, thanks so much for joining us. We will see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Research Perch. Please send feedback or questions to perch at massagetherapyfoundation.org. See you next time.